Thanks. All right. Hey guys, Brian from MBK Reptiles here. So today we're giving you guys an update on our hatchlings. Now, colubrid hatchlings to be more precise. Um, I was going through some of the babies and I said, you know what? Get Antoine, we're getting a video done. Uh, and we're just going to go through the little process of what we do when we start basically seeing babies pip out of the eggs. So we're going to dive right into it. We're going to have some fun. We're going to be cutting a few eggs. And I mean, with colubrids, it's completely different than ball python cutting videos because there's not going to be much looking into the eggs and all that because we have no time because there are too many eggs. So we're basically just slitting through them and helping them out you know, just to, to crawl out. So let's get right into it. So we have a few king snakes today. Um, here we have basically a little clutch of, I'm gonna look at my little paper right here, and we have Mexican black kings. Yes, so what we do is I have empty eggs. I just pull out the empty eggs as we go, and we can see like little little heads sticking out. This one has a little white lip, so if you, a few white scales here and what I do is I just cut and do a little slit through my shaking hands. <laughs> Too many coffee? Yeah, we have probably a lot of coffee at this time of year. And then I just do a little slit and then it removes some of the egg, some of the yolk and then helps the snake just to get out. And then we, we basically, what I do is I look through the liquid, just make sure the liquid is clear. And once they're clear, everything is good. Now you could see that there's a lot of yolk that comes out. So what I do is I like to just remove a little bit of the vermiculite that's on here, uh, just to make sure that uh, it doesn't get too humid. And we try to find some of these little baby snakes, but I'm gonna try to showcase you guys one here, but there's one like little one. There's a little head peeking. There are them, yeah, they're all hiding there. So basically once the eggs all hatch out, then we take the snakes and we put them into moss. And then that's basically where we wait for them to shed. Then we put them individually and we start feeding them. Look at this guy. So that was clutch number one, uh, just some Mexican black king. Nothing too special, but we always love Mexican black kings. Here we have desert kings now this is pretty cool we've already pulled out a few of those eggs already but there's still one egg that haven't pipped out so why is it is i'm not sure will it eventually pip out on his own probably but we will not take a chance so this one here i'm going to look into we can see there's still some vein work the liquid is clear so i'm very positive that this snake is doing well and all good, but these are beautiful snakes. So they are Lampropeltis Jetula Splendida. And you can see, I love the black bellies on those Desert Kings. Very, very beautiful. As they get bigger, they get a little bit more yellow and they're nice. Well, they come from uh, some some of the our, our babies that we have, like our adults, I mean, um, our main male is completely black. He's mainly black, which is pretty cool, but it hasn't, gone through like some of the babies it's just been diluted and then it's just selective and bred like that i guess so that's here now we have some very interesting one here these guys are one of our cool projects for holdback projects so they are from our uh ghost head pink it's a ghost head lavender to a lavender um pairing now this one here uh, this is the first time I'm looking at them right now. This one's very, very pale. So I'm told that pet ghost uh, king snakes, California king snakes, uh, tend to be a little bit more of that. You see what I'm doing? Like this is uh, like the pairing that we had last year. Yeah. With the mosaic. Mm -hmm. They Some almost look, look hypos, yeah. but uh, they're they're not necessarily hypo, which is really really cool. So the female is a an aberrant one. <laughs> How cute that is. <laughs> and then this one's gonna be it's gonna make my life a little bit tricky. But yeah, we'll go with this stay there so we're gonna go through the egg so it's gonna be really interesting because we're supposed to get some uh, so the the male is a is a ghost head pink pearl so he's head for lavender and basically we should be hatching out some lavenders out of this clutch and we're hoping that basically just increase the gene pool the lineage that's okay. nice yeah not lavender but we can definitely see the hypo influence I'm really hoping that this I'll snake hold him. is uh, yeah, probably better this way. So I'm really hoping I can pop out some lavenders. Have you seen the jet so black you... belly on this one? 
Oh yeah, that's wow. That's beautiful. That's like totally black. Hold Let's this one. Show piece this. Oh wow, that is so cool, man. This is really interesting. So the pink pearl and the, the ghost that we work with, uh, this is it's still a new project for us. It's really nice. Now, this is the empty shell. And this one is already slit, but you know what? Curiosity is a little bit high. See, oh, this one oh, has wow. a nice stripe to it. Damn, this one is beautiful. To this world already. Look at this, this one's just picking out. No lavender here. No lavender. Have you proved uh, already your male to be at lab? Mm -hmm. Well, we have not, but we have purchased them to be that. As a ghost head lab. As a ghost head lab. But now, mm. what I'm wondering is that maybe um, the lavender lineage might not be compatible, but we will see. So we have, uh, we do have a clutch of our male ghost head lab with our pink pearl female so theoretically we should be able to produce some pink pearls out of that if not then you know if this happen it will prove out that it is not head lab which we really do not hope i'm just going to wash my hands fast there we go now get on to the oven this one is going to be interesting as well because it's in the same uh cool project stuff that we have so we have some mosaic king snakes here now it seems is that the one with the mosaics 22 yes so this is mosaic to mosaic pairing now so that's my favorite project right here is a albino now this one doesn't have much uh mosaic, mosaic pattern. pattern on him but it is albino, so that's interesting. So mosaic, they definitely vary a lot. Uh, you could, you have some that are very black. You see, this one is not too think, intense. And, and then these ones here, is actually this one has a little bit of a stripe, so it's an albino. And they are in the cut. Ready? ready. Oh, this one here, oh, we can see that's really the mosaic. zigzag pattern on this one here which is basically exactly what we're looking for when it comes to this one. You can see like the vein work is, the veins are completely there. So that means that the, the eggs are R&D cut properly and relatively good. So we'll leave that as that. And I mean, I hope that we'll be able to, I wonder if there's any other ones that have hatched out. I did not see them, but definitely gonna be interesting. Too bad for the looks of them, but. So it was mosaic to mosaic, right? So this was indeed mosaic to mosaic. And we did prove out last year that uh, there was some head albinos in our, in our pairings, which is pretty cool. Now here, we have some that have actually hatched quite a lot. So these again are uh, Splendida, so just Desert Kings. So we just remove the MTH shells. Uh, they seem like they have all pipped already you can see <laughs> the little head they've already all pipped so it's pretty good but it's very very gooey so i will remove a little bit of the extra vermiculite and we can see the little baby is in there and i'll bring this one right here coming up let's so like hey, there we go so this is basically the process that we do daily. Uh, we go through the eggs, we just go through the babies, make sure everything is good, and then move on. Now, today is actually interesting because we have actually our first corn snakes hatching. So we have some scaleless corn snakes that are hatching, which is, we're super, super excited. So these guys here, um, there's basically, we have, they're just starting. So a lot of them, uh, you can see that there's just a few of the eggs that have gone there. We can see an egg has gone infertile. Uh, it's already molding from the inside. So this one we will actually remove. I'm not gonna open it just because it's gonna be smelly and I am not interested in those. So what I do is I'm just gonna go right ahead and just slit the eggs. As we have some that have started hatching. Now, I'm just gonna look. I can see there's an albino here, an albino testra, but I did not look what the actual clutch was. So I will look through this. 
So we have a reverse OKT, so it's an albino OKT scaleless with a OKT head scaleless. So theoretically, half of our babies should be scaleless in here. Um, for whichever reason, I mean, the scaleless are indeed weaker, but they do have uh, an egg tooth as well. And, uh, but they, they tend to hatch out a little bit slower. So we always tend to have like the heads hatch out first and then scaleless come right afterwards. So as much as, it's very impressive on how much liquid there is in these eggs. Mm -hmm. When you do like one little slit, it's like it just comes gushing out. I mean, these eggs are much smaller, a little bit harder. We will check the one that has actually already opened here, because these guys... You can see the little bubbles, so he's had a taste of oxygen, and then he said, you know what, screw this world, I'm staying back in my, in my egg. So you can see this is just a OKT corn snake. Okay, little one. So that is the little process that we do. We've done one, and we will have a few more. So what do we have? We have another one right here. So this here is, uh, we've got some, there's going to be a lot of hets in here. Some, some Tessera Bloods hets and then some other reverse OKT scalas. So test blood to reverse OKT scalas? Uh, no, there's actually, there's actually two clutches in this one here. Okay. Um, so sometimes what we do is we do put them together. Um, for us, like we most of the times the we put like two different clutches together and then we'll figure it out. Uh, you can see this is the reverse OKT. Actually, thinking about it, I completely messed up on the first clutch. The first clutch wasn't that. The first clutch was actually test albino head scales to scalas. That's why we had some testers, but here, I just can't read properly, it seems. You can see here the tail is like in the, it's like in a bubble. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's really weird. It's pretty wicked, actually. Never seen that before. There's a lot of things we haven't seen before right? when we do this job. Working with animals. Never cease to amaze you. Well, you can see that we don't spend much time just looking at the eggs. I mean, it's not going to take long. Um, they're going to be coming out right out of the eggs within a few a few days. Uh, what we do is when we when we puncture, we basically just make a little cut. Then we have like these special scissors that have are very pointy on one side and then flat on the other one, and then we just raise up to the to the shell and then we just slide right through and make our cut so we go in and then i go right up you can see like the blade sticking up on the on the skin and then as i can go i'll just slide it through and then just make the, the cut so basically what that does is that if there's any veins that are stuck to the top we just basically um, push them down and then it does that. So you can see some blood sometimes. Uh, we might hit some minor vein work, but most of the big veins and everything that is there uh, is untouched and does not damage any of the snake. So you can see it's a nice looking one. This again is a, not a visual scalus, but a head scalus. Pretty cool. It is so exciting to be able to do that. Now here is our last clutch of the day. So this, we have them as uh, miscellaneous. So these are basically our rat snake uh, projects, <clears throat> which these ones here is, I'm gonna open my clutch because I don't know anything by heart. So these are the four scaleless leucistic rats. So this is pretty cool. Now we had a project this year that we wanted to, um, I'm gonna open up this one a little bit more so we can actually see this one a little bit. There we go. You can see its eye. It feels like Jurassic the Park. Eye. Look at the eye. 
It's so cool. So we decided this year that we were breeding some uh, scaled blue cystic Texas rat with our scaleless project to try to get some more um, gene pool uh, in our collection. And basically we were very lucky because uh, our female proved out to be a boy. So we are not getting those. <laughs> <laughs> A new lineage uh, this year. So I thought that very lucky part was legit. Yeah, you can see it's all white, and then uh, you can see the yolk on this one. And then, so basically, these guys here, um, they're scaleless to scaleless. So everything here is going to be scaleless to cystics. Um, they're very, very cool. Did you, I mean, did you? Damn, <laughs> this one just like exploded, juice like everywhere. I wish I could go that far. Yeah, <laughs> you see this? So here. This is very dark in here, and I'm gonna go through and open this egg up because I want to show you guys um, and learn. So we can go right about here. Now this egg here, I will go and squeeze it all out, and there is absolutely nothing in this egg. So this egg looked perfect, but there's actually no embryo, none, nothing. It's actually a fully uh, infertile egg. There's absolutely nothing. Um, it actually doesn't even smell bad. Nothing. I give you really 20 bucks if you suck your finger right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna clean those hands now. So this is unfortunate, but it's pretty, it's pretty impressive to think that it didn't go bad. You know, it's really weird. But too bad. But that's definitely those. Those are the little things that we actually look through. You know, we want to see clear liquid, uh, no like whitish. A liquid we want to be able to see it's very good work. indicative and we want to see some good vein work as well in and then that's where it is so so you can see some of the eggs you see in this uh, clutch sometimes we have some that are um, they're all like misplaced so we go through them but sometimes they're in we keep them in little piles and then whenever they're close to hatch uh, they just like rip out right away but if we didn't uh, like uh, Un, like basically like rip out the eggs beforehand is because they were really stuck together so you could see that the, it's definitely a good indication to tell you that when you when the eggs are about to hatch that they're very very soft in there so here we go some more here so how many skeletons does that give us now this one so we got four eight ten a little bit over ten it's good can't seem to count. I see this one was very, very yellowish. Yeah. Has a liquid, but it, it's clear, so it looks good. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly why that would be. But it's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. They were seeing that uh, before. That yellow. And this one here is good vein work. Did hit a little vein here, but nothing major. But it's okay. So we have one, two, three, four. 9, 10, 11, 12 babies. So definitely interesting. We love our scaleless corns and uh, that's really, really cool. So let me know if you guys like um, videos like this of us like uh, cutting, cutting eggs. I mean, it's really, really, uh, we love doing it. This is definitely like day to day work that we come in and that's the first thing we do. We love doing this. We're going to have thousands of eggs to be able to cut at this point. Um, though, I'm not going to leave you just with just, you know, like egg cutting videos and basically videos of egg liquid and stuff. So I'm gonna show you a, a real, real cool clutch that actually hatched out a few a few days ago. Um, these are, we don't do many of those every year, but my they favorite. are reverse stripe Cal Kings. Now they call them reverse stripes. I guess you can guess it yourself, but it's because normally they have black stripes on the sides but these guys have a top stripe. I mean, they are beautiful. We have been producing a few of these uh, yearly. We've made sure that our lineage is really, really nice. And then are in very, very high demand. Again, we will not be posting any of those animals for sale. So if you are interesting, interested in a few of these, we, you can let us know that you've seen it, this video on YouTube and that you are interested, we would be probably looking into selling a few. We're going to be keeping maybe like one or two 
and there's a couple of people that want them, but we might have a few individuals, so make sure that you give us a shout. I mean, these guys, uh, there's not many around, so we're asking a good $400 for these. And I mean, they're the, the high end, how beautiful they are, selectively bred like this is crazy. Some of them, uh, they're not as nice. They don't, they have a lot more pattern on the sides. And, uh, but these guys, the contrast on these are just stunning. Some of them are a little bit more yellow, but the those guys are clearly outstanding. So you just enjoy those. So those are about to shed. You can see like they've already gone through the blue phase. So they're about to shed uh, any day. And so that's the, be... the moss used to... Uh... And we do use like uh, the New Zealand sphagnum moss. It's the moss that we use. We put a little water bowl for them and we wait till they shed and then we put them on Aspen chips and we feed them. So this is our little thing. Now, it's very hot, it's very humid. I'm sweating right now, but it's definitely good. We like close all our fans and everything to make sure that you guys can hear us properly, but it's definitely worth it. So I hope you guys like this video. If you like videos like this, make sure that you subscribe to our channel. You like the video, uh, share it. Uh, we, we love sharing all this these wonderful like uh, beings with you guys and until then thank you very much and no stress let's get some more babies